Okay, let us take a look at warping. Warping is a lot easier than people make it seem. I have my tempo. Right now it's set to 123. I can tell by selecting a metronome, pressing play. I can drag this up to whatever I want, as low as I want, etc. I can select it and use my arrow up keys. I'm just holding the arrow up. And you can see it rise in tempo. And I can tap tempo. Okay. In most cases, you're going to want a whole integer here, a whole number. And there's various reasons for this, but most people don't compose in 141.39. That's usually indicates some kind of a mistake. So for now, let's just say 120, because that's what your session will be if you save file, new session. Okay. 120. I'm going to delete these two MIDI tracks for now. We don't need them. And let us get into some files and warp them. Here's a thing that we should warp. I'm going to just select it in session view. And you see that right away it comes in. And in my sample box, I have a universal view here. And I can use a scroll wheel to go up and down. And I see that I have a song. Right now, I want to turn on, in this sample box, the warp switch. Okay. Ableton thinks that this clip starts at the beginning, and it kind of does, but it kind of doesn't. Okay, there's a swoosh in there, but for our purposes, for discovering where the beat is on this thing, we have to tell Ableton where it starts. See this little gray thing? That's called a pseudo warp marker. This is where Ableton thinks, hey, this might be kind of where it starts. What do you think, Bill? I say, well, no, I'm going to get closer up on it. And I'm going to try to pick a zero crossing, which means somewhere where these both have a zero kind of an axis. And I want to put my cursor down in there. If you have trouble getting your cursor exactly where you want it to be, it's because you need to go into the contextual menu here and turn this grid off. Okay, for now. So I'm going to put it there and maybe back it up a little bit. And I'm going to double click. Okay. And now I'm going to right click this and say set 1.1.1 here. Okay. Now the fact is, is that Ableton Live does an amazing job at warping these tracks. So the principle is the fewer warp markers that we use, the more likely of an accurate result we're going to get. I don't any longer need this warp marker here. So I'm going to double click it and take it off. So now I have my beginning of my song right here and Let's hear how this sounds. It's off, right? Yeah, it is off. You can see this grid. Just unselect it here for us. You can see right here, if I take my grid out to quarter notes, it's completely off. Well, I haven't done any warping yet. So here is the fail safe way to do this. I've set 1.1.1 here. Then I'm going to right click this and I'm going to say warp from here straight. If anything you need to know about warping is that there is this menu right here. Forget about all this stuff right here except for warp from here straight. And watch my grid. In fact, I'm going to make this a little bigger so you can see it switch in the background. See how off it is. And then I'm going to say warp by clicking on the start point, warp from here straight. And bing, it just slaps it right in to the grid. Okay. When I go further up, it is it is smack dab on the grid. And you can confirm that with your metronome and playing. And I'm gonna just raise this tempo a little bit, 126. dead on. Okay, now sometimes, but rarely, sometimes I'll go in at the very last part of the track. You can see in my universal view that I'm way down at the very end. And I'll take the last kind of discernible beat and make a mark and just bring it onto the grid. And that's just if you're OCD guy and you just want to make sure that's right. 
Okay, so now that track is warped. What if I want to take this to another session and I want that warp information preserved? That's easy, I just have to go over to the sample box and say save. And then in my browser, I will have an analysis file, Bill Burgess Day of Radiance, and there's gonna be a little saved thing down in there, something like so, ASD file. That's the warp marker file. It's just tiny, so if you see them, don't get rid of them. Ableton uses them. Okay, what about warping a track that's much slower than the BPMs that you're working at? Everybody always shows you how warping works so great, but they're not really stretching it. Okay, let's take this track to the second one and take a listen to it. Okay, as you can see, it is way off. And Ableton thinks that that's 120. I'm going to guess that's a lot slower than that. Okay, now what we're going to do is the very self-same thing. I'm going to show Ableton where I think the one is. And I believe it's right here. I'm going to get my cursor right up on it. And I'm going to say warp. Turn on the warp switch. Put my cursor right in there. Double click it. And then I'm going to right click it and say set 1.1.1 here. And go back. Take this off. And then what? We take his and say warp from here straight. Okay, now something funny has happened here. And this is why I chose this example. Okay, Ableton got it right, but it's about half as slow as I want it to be. Okay, so what I'm going to do is double the speed by selecting this button right here. And I can promise you that I didn't compose that at 77.01. So I'm just going to select it and hit 77 return. Make it 77 even. And let's hear what we do now. Pretty dead on. And just go out to the very end, as I'm known to do. You don't have to do this, but I'm just going to double click a marker in and just make that right up to zero. And then that's saved as well. Okay, now we've warped two tracks and let's play them together. That's warping the easy way in Ableton Live. You get in here, you find the one, the very start point. You click select 1.1 here, and then you do the very same thing. From that point on, you say warp from here straight, and that'll get 99% of the tracks warped. For warping of live performances, it's simply a matter of moving from left to right and adding markers carefully because you don't want to warp the performance out of some great piece of music but a bands can drift and everything and but you just kind of want to gently bring it into the grid and remember if you find yourself getting into a situation where there's just you know 12 warp markers and it's getting worse and worse the reason is is that as you work your way from left to right these tracks out here are also getting rewarped. So from here to there is also getting constantly rewarped as you move along. So the idea, even when you're warping live performances, is to use as few warp markers as possible. You capture as big of sections of real performance, in the case of live performed music, as you can.